Amen. Number three, we've got to understand that the fire had to be maintained. Any Royal Ranger knows that. Holly's husband, Judah, is our fire maintainer when we are camping. He's a pyro. He doesn't like a little fire. He likes it to be going. Come on. Do I got any people in the house when you go camping? That's the way you want it. Amen. And But somebody has to maintain the fire. And it was up for the priests who were hungry for the presence of God in that day to maintain the fire. God would bring the fire, but if they wouldn't maintain it, it wasn't going to stay. Now, I'll tell you, there's a lot of people who want God to come at times into their life. They, but they actually, they have not a lot of interest in maintaining the fire all the time and maintaining the presence all the time in their life. It's kind of like they want to go camping with Jesus every once in a while. Are you with me? They want to go camping with Jesus, and, and you know, Jesus will give them a little sweet marshmallow and, and put it between two graham crackers with some chocolate, and they'll even say, Lord, I guess this is so wonderful, I want some more. I want some more of you. Come on. How many of you know what I'm talking about today? But they like to warm themselves at the fire, and it's okay for a day or two, but they're not really interested in living with the fire. But I've discovered that there's some of you out here today, some people that are part of Fountain of Life, some believers here that you, you don't want just a momentary campfire with the Lord. Come on. You don't want to just warm yourself up a little bit and then walk away. Uh -uh. I found out that there's some people that you are saying, I want to have the fire of God, the presence of God in my life 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Come on. Do I have anybody in the house that says, I want to have the fire of God in my life all the time. I want the presence of God. Well, let me tell you, if you want the fire, you've got to maintain it. Right. He had to prepare wood. They had to prepare wood and put it on the fire. They had to sacrifice on the fire. They had to clean out the ashes. And the fact of the matter is that the fire stayed because the priests were obedient and hungry for the presence That's of God. Right. Yeah. Now, I tell you, there's a lot of symbolism in this passage. Yeah. So we're going to go a little deep today, all right? Everybody put on your galoshes. Some of y'all don't even know what galoshes are. Okay. We're going to go deep into the word today, all right? But here's, the, here's some symbolism for you today. The priests were instructed to carry out the ashes every single day. That's right. They would set the embers to the side. They would wait until all of the sacrifice had been consumed, all of the fat had been burned, all of the wood had been burned, except a few embers. They would put it to the side. They would take a shovel, and they would clean off the altar and take all of the ashes, and then they would change their clothes, go to the outside of the camp, and put those ashes in a place that was clean, okay? Now, now, now most of us understand some of the symbolism that's found in the Old Testament tabernacle. How many of you realize that Jesus is our sacrifice? Yes. Come on, aren't you glad you don't need to offer a bull and a goat? Yes. Then you, aren't you glad you don't have to bring a sheep to church with you? And we can have a big old fire and a that would be crazy, wouldn't it? But that's what they had to do in those days. But Jesus, amen, he's the perfect sacrifice. So we don't have to do that, right? We know that the fire is the presence of the Holy Spirit, right? We understand that. It's the presence of God. But what is this business about the ashes? Is there anyone who ever got to a point in your life where you looked at your life and you said, man, how in the world did I do that? I set my whole life on fire and all I got is ashes. All I got is a pile of rubble. All I got is ashes. What happened to my life? What happened to my relationships? What happened to my stuff? How did I end up here? And the question becomes this, who's going to clean up the mess? Well, let me tell you something. The Word of God prophesies that Jesus Christ is the great mess cleaner of Come on. I love Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 3. It says this about Jesus, that he'll give you beauty for your ashes. Come on. Let me tell you, all you might have in your life is a bunch of ashes. You might think, oh, this is nothing to present to the Lord. Let me tell you something. You give him your ashes, he'll give you his beauty. He'll turn your life and make it into something beautiful. Come on. Can we give a big praise for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords today? Our high priest, Jesus. 
pure and clean, carried our ashes and our sins away from us. Aren't you grateful for that? The scripture tells us in Hebrews 4 and 14 that we have a great high priest and the ashes represent what we used to be, what we were, the times that we messed up, the things that we did that came to nothing. But what Jesus did, because he was pure and because he was clean, he went to a place called Calvary and he took my sins away. I love the very fact that John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus coming, he didn't just simply say, this is the one that will atone for your sins, cover up your sins. He said, this is the one who came to take your sins away. Come on. He took the ashes of your life. Amen. And he took them to another place. Come on. Amen. Give the Lord praise today. Amen. Is there anybody here who said, yeah, the Lord had a lot of work to do when he started cleaning up my life. Amen. He had a lot of work to do. Amen. How many say he's not quite finished yet? Come on. He's still hauling out some ashes. He's still getting rid of some junk. But God, aren't you grateful that we've got a great high priest who knows how we feel, who's touched with the feelings of our infirmity? Come on, give him praise. Then there is the symbolism of bringing a new sacrifice every day. The priests were instructed to bring a new sacrifice every day. They were to take the old out and bring the new in, right? Yeah. They put the new wood on every day, the old ashes out, the new wood in. The old sacrifice burnt down the ashes out, and the new sacrifice was put in. And it was very symbolic of the fact that when Jesus became our sacrifice, his mercies become new every morning. Amen. Amen. Aren't you grateful for that? Amen. If his sacrifice worked yesterday, it'll work today. Come on. Who's grateful for the shed blood of Jesus? Who's grateful for the sacrifice on the cross? Listen, if the shed blood of Jesus washes people and sets them free, come on, yesterday, it'll still work today. Amen. If he delivered people from crack yesterday, he can deliver them from crack today. Come on. If he didn't put your world back yesterday, he can put it back to today. Yeah. Come on, I'm just grateful today that when I got up the scripture says that his mercies are new every morning. Aren't you glad that when you got up this morning you realize that it's a brand new day. That God said I still love you, I'm still with you and my mercies are right there. Come on, bring us his steadfast love. Bring us his mercy. mercy. Amen. Even when we didn't deserve it, his mercy was there. New mercy. Now, in today's New Testament culture, we don't have to take ashes out and bring in sacrifices. But you know, there is something that we need to sacrifice. Right. Hebrews 13 and verse 15 tells us this. We're to give a sacrifice of praise. Amen. Amen. Therefore, by him, let us on occasion, like once every three, four months. No. No. Oh, it says continually. Oh, I just want to make sure nobody was sleeping this morning. Okay. Let, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. You see, what's this all about? Let me tell you what it's all about. You see, God doesn't want you living with the ashes of your life. How God? He wants to take that all away, and he wants to give you a new life. Come on, a new life for every day. You get up and you thank him, and you say, thank you, Jesus. My sins have been forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, I've been set free. Thank you, Jesus, I'm not bound anymore like I used to be. Thank you, Lord, that my name is written in the last book of life. Is there anybody that wants to give a praise to their pastor today? are new and we've got to offer him continually a sacrifice of praise. Come on. We can walk through the garden and you see the lilies of the field and you can say, oh God, thank you Lord that you're going to provide for me like the day of these lilies. Come on. We can praise him when we walk into the grocery store. We can say thank you Jesus for bananas. Thank you Jesus for apples and oranges. Amen. When you see your husband and your wife, can you say thank you Lord. Something old, I want to give him something new. 
Come on. I don't want yesterday's anointing and yesterday's blessing. I'm believing that God has an anointing and a blessing for today. Come on. But you see, the fire of praise has to be maintained. Amen. 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 God told Moses, you tell Aaron and his sons and those that come after, don't let the fire go out. That's right. yeah. and as you further your studies, you're going to find out that the fire burned for over eight centuries. Yep. 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 <laughs> over eight centuries. Wow. It burned without going out. It burned continuously. Now the lamp went out in Eli's day, but not the fire on the altar. The source of that fire had literally been God himself. But in about 586 B.C., we read where a king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar came and conquered the Jews. Now, the Jews had been very rebellious. They had been full of insurrection and iniquity, and they had been worshiping other gods and full of sexual immorality. And so Nebuchadnezzar came and he conquered the Jews and he sacked Jerusalem and he took the king and his sons and he slew the king's sons right before his eyes and then he put the king's eyes out and he went into the temple and he destroyed the and he destroyed the temple and the saddest part of it all is that he took that brazen altar where that flame had been burning brightly for eight centuries and he put out that fire. Oh, come on. And when that fire went out, that's when the Jews' bondage came. That's when the pain came. That's when the struggle came. Struggle came. And that the fire being out symbolized that there was no longer holiness in the camp. That the presence of God was no longer inside of that camp. And I'm here to tell you that the enemy of your soul is going to do everything he can to put your fire out. You see, he didn't want you excited about Jesus. He doesn't want you coming to the house of the Lord. He doesn't want you reading the word of God. He doesn't want you full of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want you praying in a prayer language. He doesn't want you. He'll do anything he can to quench the Spirit's fire. He'll put circumstances on you. He'll try to destroy you, discourage you. But is there anybody in this house that says, I'm going to maintain the fire of the Lord. You go ahead Knock it out of me. You're not going to knock it out of me. You can turn the fire down on the inside. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to be cute this morning. That's not possible. My native feet are gone. Thank you, Sister Carrie. You didn't have to laugh like that. But I'm going to tell you this, that if the fire ever goes out in America, you think we have trouble now. We cannot let the fire go out. We cannot let the fire go out. And I'm just here to declare that the United States of America needs churches where the fire of God is present. And the presence of the Lord is present. And the holiness of God is present. And as I studied this out, I never read again in the Old Testament where that fire was supernaturally lit. The fire went out. Men lit fires. But it seemed that after the supernatural fire of God had come and it was snuffed out by Nebuchadnezzar, it seemed like it was gone for good and for sure. And God had instructed the people, don't let the fire go out. And it went out. 